kick back, relax. Welcome to the Laidback Life. It's Laidback Marco, and I'm here with another video. Um, and this video is titled, I'm a bad YouTuber, and you might be too. And I know what you're thinking, that's a, um, it's kind of like a negative thing to say, and a lot of people will be like, oh, you struggle with self-esteem, and I do, although I do struggle with self-esteem, I think admitting you're bad at something, um, makes it so that you can see ways to improve it. But instead of phrasing it as, I'm bad at this, you can think about it in ways of, hey, these are ways I can improve. Um, so one of the first reasons I'm bad at YouTube is I don't script my videos. And I think for me, I just like the natural flow, that kind of free, free flow of thoughts and um, feelings coming across um, um, <laughs> in my kind of dialogues and I, I kind of like that but um, I think for a lot of YouTubers it's better to script your videos and it's something I might start doing going into the future. Um, number two reason why I'm pretty bad at YouTube is the frequency of uploads and this is something that I, I think a lot of YouTubers fall into the trap of. Um, I don't think it's they they're not working hard because I actually do really care about YouTube and I do want to become a YouTuber. Um, but <laughs> it's, it's hard um, when you want something, the quality of something to be really high. But sometimes you just have to realize the more videos you put out, the quality will increase. Um, I think I watched a good art video on this um, where there's diminishing returns on the quality of a product if you spend on time on it too long. And the people who make something to like 70% and aim for 70% can put out a lot more stuff and they get better with time because they're putting out so much stuff. And yeah, um, it helps you get over that fear of creation, which is really difficult because I do care about YouTube. Like, uh, don't look at that plastic bag here, but I, I care about the set design. I care about the lighting. Um, when I do make those videos where I'm out in the world. I, you know, I care about the camera work. I care about the edit. I care about the music. And one thing I care about, which a lot of YouTubers don't, is the sound levels. It's really annoying to come across a video that might have great content, but the the levels are really low and it's, uh, it's really frustrating to come across those. So um, I care about all that stuff. And I think that's one of the reasons why the frequency of my uploads is less. And it's something that you can correct too if you're trying to become a YouTuber. Not every video has to be perfect. Um, number three reason why I think my YouTube channel is struggling is because it's uh, a random amalgamation of things. Um, and this is something I, I've been saying I'm going to do for a while, but I think for my different kinds of content, I'm going to start spreading it across um, different different channels. Um, all I, I plan to upload everything under this channel just, just to kind of keep it. Um, laid back Marco and um, everything like that but I think it's good to branch out into different channels because because when I notice this myself when I watch YouTube I go to one person for one specific thing so that might be something that you could do number four reason why I'm not a good youtuber and you might share this um, struggle with me is I don't do enough research on trending videos and I don't create for an algorithm which is something that you should try to do if you're actually trying to become a YouTuber. What makes Mr. Beast viral? What makes all these videos viral? I think Ludwig is a good channel to watch if you want to actually learn how to kind of not game the system, but use the system to your advantage. Um, one danger that I, I am kind of, kind of afraid of falling into is that um, I don't want my videos to kind of I don't want to create for YouTube. I still want to create for me, but it's finding a way to balance that I think is important moving into the future. Um, number five reason, oh God, five. <laughs> reason why I'm struggling as a YouTuber is I'm kind of afraid to find importance in myself and find every single little thing I, I do important. Um, what I mean by that is you see a lot of YouTubers will kind of inconvenience people by carrying their cameras around. And it's hard for me to do that actually. Um, and I, I don't think of myself as that important where I need to record everything. Um, a lot of YouTubers are kind of self-centered and I think you have to be a, li a little self-centered to create a kind of persona around yourself, right? Um, I'm kind of afraid to be vulnerable and let people into 
not only my struggles, but my life. Or for example, I struggle with eczema, which is something, you know, a lot of people struggle with around the world. Um, I'm struggling with my whole gender identity thing, um, which, which is, you know, it's been really hard. Um, it's been really hard struggling with not only gender identity, but, you know, um, <laughs> um, eczema and, you know, just living in Japan has been really hard. And I think it's, it's hard for me to open up and be vulnerable, not only uh, with myself, um, I have trouble getting in touch with my emotions, but with you as well, you as the viewer. Um, and I think that's important if you want to build kind of a, a channel and an audience is being able to kind of put yourself out there and um, yeah, put yourself out. It's the only way you'll really connect with people is if you put yourself out there and I have a really hard time doing that. And those are the five reasons why I'm kind of struggling as a YouTuber. Um, at the tail end of this video, I'm just going to tell you things I've kind of done and I might kind of throw in some footage of things I've done um, over over top of this, just so it's just not a talking head video the whole time. But um, yeah, so I went to this um, festival kind of thing. I went to this uh, Morioka local festival and I took a bunch of footage, but I never actually did anything with it. Um, and... Then, then when I went to Tokyo, I, I went to this place where, like, it's kind of like a, a maid cafe bar sort of a thing, but all the maids are guys that kind of dress like me. And, uh, you know, I, I wore my cosplay around Tokyo. And I feel like that's something I could have shared with everybody, but I, I didn't end up doing anything. Because um, I was, you know, I was kind of nervous. Um, and I didn't have anywhere to put, like, when you wear clothes like this, you don't have pockets like where do you put stuff like and I don't have a purse or anything so it's like kind of hard to carry all my stuff around I don't know I just put it in my camera bag which looked kind of odd but oh, I did end up bringing my camera with me but um yeah but then I went to the military base um spent some time with my cousin looked at cars we had Yokosuka friendship day and that was a lot of fun um but I, I didn't film anything and it's hard for me to think that I'm so self-important that I need to film this stuff and it's only looking back on it where I'm like oh I kind of missed an opportunity for you know people to see what Yokosuka friendship day is like for people to see what life in Iwate Japan is like to um see what this car event is like and yeah I took a just a bunch of footage and I I think action is stopping me from doing stuff um so I think at the end of the day you just kind of have to produce more content and um yeah there are those are some reasons why you might be struggling as a youtuber and that's why i might be a bad youtuber and there there's things that you can do to um kind of get around and um move forward from now on and i think i've been wanting to do this for a while i've always wanted to do strategy sunday i've thought of it i thought of it in my head all the time where it's like on my layback marco channel i'll document everything that i'm doing to try to kind of make it on the internet <laughs> and um, share it with you so in case I ever make it um, I'll be able to share it with people and be like oh laid back Marco like oh he didn't work hard like like I bust my ass in Apex Legends let me tell you and I'm I'm grinding for Masters this split and you know I'm pretty damn good at the game even though like pretty damn good at the game but like it's for me it's like I always think I'm not good at it because it's like I'm not Masters and not Fred but it's like yeah, like, I'm Diamond and I'm grinding for Masters this split, so I'm pretty darn good at it. It's, um, I read something in, um, Tim Ferriss' Tools of the Titans that said if you're in the top percent of, 15 percent of anything, you can make a living doing something around it. So, um, I'm trying really hard to, you know, make gaming part of my life, make art a part of my life, make music a part of my life, and, um, we're still figuring it out. I'm still figuring it out, and, um, the nice thing about admitting that you're bad at something, like I said at the start of the video, is that nice shit, boys. you can take steps to kind of round out and prove it. Don't forget your accomplishments, um, but just realize where you are and where you have to grow. And um, yeah, hopefully you can keep on making YouTube videos. Peace.